Hi, I'm Teresa Elling from The Peaceful Home. Thanks for joining me today. I am a wife and mom, grandma, and a professional organizer. And today we are going to go through my laundry room redo. Uh, I'm probably gonna break this into two parts so it's not too long, but today we're gonna go through basic organization of any space. If you're new to my channel, um, please consider subscribing, hit the like button to give me feedback, and I would love a comment on what you think about this segment, if you have any questions, or things, you, things that you would like to see me cover in the future. My laundry room has been a bit of a mess for a while, and it's been one of those things that's just been weighing on me. I keep closing the door, and finally I tackled it, and I knew it was going to be a big job, this is the first time I've had an indoor laundry space. And uh, I take that back. I had my previous home, I had an indoor laundry room as well. Before that, for 25 years, always out in the garage. So having a laundry room inside is just so nice. It's really a blessing. And it's great space. Uh, there's room for so much more than laundry, which I love. It's become our craft room, our toy closet. and But because of that, there are so many things that can get thrown in there. If I don't know where to put stuff, things tend to just kind of get left in there. So after a time when you can see clutter building up, you know that either you have things that need to be put away or you have things that don't have a home yet and you need to find a home for them. So you can see the before shots. This is what my laundry room looked like before. And this first photo I'm gonna show you is to the left of the washer and dryer. These are my towels, beach towels, the tools that I use in the house. Also all of our paper goods that are just kind of thrown on the shelf. And I know that I do want to have a basket or a bin for those eventually. And this is pretty packed. It's everything is shoved in there. There really isn't any give or take. There's no room for anything else. And I've got baskets that aren't labeled. And so they've just been filling up with who knows what. This next photo is the back wall. And this is where I hang our laundry room clothes. And I've noticed that the shelves there, that my intention was to have our extra dishes that we use for parties and large events. But what's happened is I have toys and crafts that don't fit where they're supposed to, and so they get put onto this shelf. And so it's just kind of become a clutter zone. And um, I have things like light bulbs and things for our tea parties. But my biggest concern is the work surface because that is just getting covered with things that aren't getting put away or that don't have a spot. And so my goal is to clear that out. The next photo is our games and toys and craft supplies. And again, it's so crowded that anytime you're trying to put something away, it's often just easier to kind of shove it in a little nook or cranny rather than putting it away properly. And you can see that I even have stuff leaking up to the top, which there were times, for example, Christmas when we had the whole family here and I was buying bulk items, uh, food and things like that from Costco, and I had nowhere to put them. And I thought I would love the top of these shelves to just be free so that I have a space to stick things for times like that. But in this case, there is not a single inch to spare in this laundry room. So again, my goal is to cut down to maybe 80% capacity to leave a little bit of margin. Next is behind the door. And for one thing, there are these red hooks that do not work well. Every time I put a mop or a broom up there, it ends up slipping out. So I'll walk in and the door might not even open, things are falling over, and it's just kind of a catch-all back there. So again, to remind you, the very first step for any decluttering process is to remove everything from the space. So that's what I did. I've taken everything out. This photo shows the room completely empty and I'm preparing to paint. But first, we're gonna walk through how to declutter these items. 
Now you get to see the reality of things getting worse before they get better. I've pulled everything out. I have sorted and I've gotten rid of quite a bit and started to reorganize putting things in baskets and bins, but you can see there's just stuff everywhere. And this has definitely been my problem area. If you can believe it, these are our toys and games after sorting, after getting rid of some things. And it's just difficult. If you have children, it's hard to know what they're going to want to play with at various um, stages of their childhood. And I honestly don't buy things for my grandchildren. Um, maybe a few Lego sets. Otherwise, almost all of this is from my children, and I've just saved things. Um, I did go through with my grandkids and help them get rid of a few things that they weren't interested in playing with, but I still feel like this is too much. It also is all of our craft stuff, which is definitely going back in, but I feel like I just have to pare down a little more. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. I chose to go through each bin individually. Very often you can be tempted to remove all the items but not touch everything. And there were a couple of my craft bins that I looked at and I thought, no, I need everything in here. I don't really need to go through it. But I thought, I need to follow my own advice. And this is what I would tell a client to do. We've got to go through it all. And we've got to take off the lids and we've got to touch everything. And what ended up happening was three large bins that I have actually got reduced to two because I did have stuff I could get rid of. So make sure that you go through each drawer, bin, cupboard, whenever you're organizing. I did go through the toys again. And one of the things that you can do is really you can make your space tell you what you can keep and what you can't. And so by the time I started moving things back in, I just decided this is how it has to fit and I am not going to be done until I can make it fit. And so my question would be, can I get rid of one more puzzle? Or if I had to get rid of one toy, what would it be? And I just continued to declutter and take things out until it fit and until I was satisfied. One of the things I got rid of was our play kitchen and it took up a ton of space for one thing. And what I found was when the kids play with it, we pull out the play kitchen, we pull out the bin of play toys and play, uh, play food, and they really love spreading everything out on the table and making dishes, going around, taking orders, preparing plates of the different kinds of food, and they really don't even use the kitchen part. So I realized the way our family uses it, I don't even need it. So that was a huge item I was able to get rid of the other thing is realizing that most of the time, in the season that I'm in as a grandma, my kids are not here all the time. The grandkids come to visit, and because we live on a river, we're on 10 acres, they love to be outside. And so we are adventuring quite a bit of the time and spending less time with toys, but I wanna make sure they have a few quiet time toys. And then again, the games and puzzles, those stay because those are things that we do as a family. But it enabled me to see that my grandkids play differently than it when it was my children that were with me 24 seven and had quiet time here every single day and we needed a few more options. So I just realized I really could simplify and we just had a large family gathering uh, we had everyone from three states coming in, and our youngest daughter graduated from Fresno Pacific. We had a celebration, and no one missed the toys that were gone, uh, the puzzles that were gone. We've got some new ones, so we're rotating out, and everyone had an amazing time, and no one missed the things that got donated. So I think I made a good choice. I also wanted to mention towels. It can be so easy when we get new bath towels that the old ones kind of go in the rag pile. And I just had too many, more than we could ever use. I don't need that many rags. I only need some kind of rag towels for drying a car or a sandy dog off. Um, but I don't need as many as I had. And even our beach towels, when I look at when the entire family is here, how many we might use, I still had more than we would use at one time. 
And so again, I'm just trying to simplify. And so I chose a number that I wanted and I, I cut down, I chose my favorite towels, got rid of ones that I didn't care for as much. And it's just a simpler, cleaner look. It took me about 24 hours to completely clean the space. The, the shelves needed to be scrubbed down and we have had a mice problem, mouse problem. <laughs> mice um, have been getting in and cleaning up after them is not fun, but I did that, cleaned and sanitized everything and got ready to paint. And it's amazing, just here's the after, just a fresh look of white. It's just so, feels so clean. And I chose to paint the um, shelves to the left of the washer and dryer green. I really wanted to bring in some plants. I wanted a pop of color and I'm really pleased with this color. I'll link down below uh, the name of it. I can't think of it offhand. So now with a clean, freshly painted space, I'm ready to move my items back in reorganize them, see if I need any particular bins or containers, and be ready to go to label. One of the things that helped me was to make a list of the things that I wanted my laundry room to include and to do for me. What stuff did I want to be in there and what things did I not want to be in there? And I made a list and this is my yes list. These are all the things that are going to stay the things that I want to be close by. I definitely keep tools, a house set, so that I don't have to go out to our detached garage to get you know, a simple hammer and nail. So I keep some of those things nearby. So these are my guest list. This is the stuff that belong in the laundry room. And this is kind of a way also of labeling. It's saying this is what the laundry room is for. This is what the laundry room is not for. I'm not gonna store my toilet paper there anymore. It's gonna get moved. We have a large adventure bin that's all of the kids' outdoor stuff, um, lanterns and backpacks and just fun things when we go on hikes. That's gonna go out to the garage. Grocery bags are gonna get moved. My pet supplies are gonna get moved to another location. Ice chests we use very infrequently. Those are going out to the garage. And light bulbs as well. I don't use them, so they're going out to the garage. And just that freed up a lot of space and reminded me what is the purpose of this room. So make a list of yes and no, and that will help you determine what is the purpose of this space. I hope these tips were helpful. You can apply this to any space in your home. Remove everything, sort through every single bin, make your decisions and see what will fit. If it still won't quite fit, you might have to get rid of a few other things, but it will be worth it, I promise. Typically, we store things for that we might need it someday, and often that day never comes, and we've stored all of this stuff. And often what I tell clients is, let's say that you have 50 things you're gonna get rid of, and of those 50 things, let's say it's the waffle maker that you haven't used in four years. You know, you can go to Target and for 20 bucks you can buy a new waffle maker. And would it not be worth all of that space for $20? It's very rare that someone has to go out and repurchase an item that they donated. But even if you had to do that, I think that small cost would be completely worth having the extra space and the peace of mind that comes with some clarity of the purpose of that space. Being able to see what you have. You should be able to see everything at a glance, not have layers and layers to dig under and look behind and try to find your items. That is so stressful. Soon I will be doing the reveal, the after of my laundry room, and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. Thanks so much for joining me today on The Peaceful Home.